Hello, in this video I am going to show you the way that I set up my power line, my electrical power line from my generator to my house. Keep in mind my e electrical power line is not connected to the house uh, grid power network. It's an isolated uh, power line. Okay, so this is the point that the uh, power enters the house. This hole was already here from an old cable line that I used. I simply had to dismantle the uh, switch box and I made sure that the wiring was uh, replaced the, in the original uh, 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 connection points so that way the switch would work the way it's intended right now it's in the off position I can turn it on this way when I'm uh, connected to the generator I don't need to uh, go to the generator and unplug uh, uh, the electrical power line so I can just control that from here and I can go ahead and start up the generator without having to pull the plug out of the generator and once the generator generator is running I can come back in the house and then flip the switch and then uh, have power supplied to this cable electrical cable here this is an extension cord about 25 feet I, I have a, one of those this is the end of it uh, I, I, I can attach or plug in three uh, electrical or, or electronic uh, in, uh, uh, um, it, uh, instruments or appliance or I also have some um, surge protectors uh, I will also keep in mind uh, that I need to make sure that I don't overload the system by uh, connecting too much uh, instruments or or uh, anything that uses electricity appliance um, I will uh, make sure I read all of the uh, the power ratings um, the maximum and uh, voltages and current ratings and add it up so that way I don't uh, uh, overdraw this uh, power from the generator and cause uh, uh, some type of overload in the system which is usually uh, not good it can overheat and damage your wiring and cause fires and such so um, so this is the setup I have for the uh, power supply coming from the generator from outside into the house now let's follow the line through here into the outside and see the setup okay so that's there coming outside Oh, here's my cat. <laughs> Probably wants to go in. No? Okay. Okay, so here the uh, power enters, the cable enters the house. <laughs> and then I have it run up into a wet weatherproof box. I think if I open it up, it, uh, it would want to uh, fall out. But this is plugged in to the extension cable I put um, electrical tape a whole reel of tape around the uh, point where the plugs uh, connect and then I put them uh, the connection into a ziplock bag and then I tape the only open point down here so there's no chance of water getting into the uh, the uh, connection points of the uh, the cables and then this is an added uh, measure of protection these boxes that are weatherproof uh, so these are weatherproof boxes and so that way when rain falls uh, it's safe and dry and I, I made sure that the sealed or the connection points are also uh, sealed and 
uh, watertight just in case this were to open in by some means somehow and were to fall the, when the rain falls here usually has a big puddle so it should still uh, be dry so I try to plan ahead so right now it's, it's locked securely into place and then from here is where the cable goes to the generator but before I continue talking about that let's talk about uh, the mounting posts I purchased two um, spikes post spikes <clears throat> and I it's pretty it's long actually it's, it's more than half that's in the ground right now I wanted to leave a gap here I didn't want to go um, too close to the wall and just to protect the paint and um, then I, I attach these I have another one over there across there that I'm gonna show you when I get over there that looks just like this so these pieces of uh, posts were rem remnants or uh, remaining uh, pieces that, that I cut off from my gate post that I installed with the same setup um, and that's what that's the location that I I'd, I'd, um, um, attach the weatherproof box junction junction box to uh, to this post and then okay so now we follow the the cable extension cable and this is all I think this is now not 25 feet like the previous one this is I think it's about 50 feet if I'm not mistaken so uh, I purchased some PVC um, some elbow joints and uh, th the longest uh, um, PVC that I can get in one and a quarter diameter and I uh, the reason I say one and one quarter is because the ends of the the, the uh, um, plugs when they uh, that connect they just barely were able to uh, go through the holes in the PVC to the other end in the elbow joints um, going through the uh, one and one quarter pipes was easy I simply put a string tied it to the end of the cable put a, a weight to the end of the other the other end of the string and and, and uh, put the weight through the pipe lifted the pipe over the weight fell through and I pulled the string and it pulled the cable through and that's what uh, the way I I sent the cable through the pipes so um, the only thing that's remaining now is for me to glue the joints of the pipes together before I can bury it under the ground but before I did that I wanted to uh, uh, record this video so you can see the setup so I I also put the ends where there's an elbow facing down so uh, when rain falls it would not catch uh, water or collect water into the pipes uh, and then this way if there's ever any bits of water in the pipe it can actually evaporate out and so it it, uh, it would be dry and, and and safe for the cable inside so now I I will follow the cable all the way through to the other side when you look here you're gonna see these little uh, uh, elbows uh, cross uh, T joints uh, where I have these little um, extensions so that's meant to make sure that the pipe does not twist left or right it's like having feet it's like having feet so uh, the pipe should uh, not turn and, and cause the ends to lean over like it's doing right now it's because I did not glue the, the elbow joints at the end over there so it's it's leaning a little over but once I glue everything and it dries and sets it should be a very sturdy then I'll dig uh, ditches and bury the pipes and then we sh should not see the pipes uh, until it reaches the end where we have a vertical um, exit point from the ground at, towards the post so so if we come over here this is where the cable comes out and then it comes up in here and here I just have the end of this one in a Ziploc bag being safe from rain and so I can connect this cable 
to uh, this cable here that I, I will run along the fence and then go into the shed which it fits uh, easily through and the generator is on the inside but before I show you the generator on the inside I want to show you that I have also have the generator already connected to ground a grounding rod I put this Ziploc bag to keep the uh, keep it dry from the rain to limit oxidize, oxidization um, so here is the grounding rod here and then here's the grounding cable from the generator that's connected to this grounding rod I'll put this back well I'll take care of that later afterwards <laughs> all right so now let's see the generator on the inside so now I'm going to my shed now my shed is very well ventilated even when the door is closed you can see just by the sunlight that it's not sealed so I can actually run the generator inside the shed with the door closed so the, the generator would be dry and it will have a good cycle of air so um, I don't have to worry about uh, carbon monoxide getting uh, uh, collected in here especially during a rainstorm and here are two cans of reserve fuel the generator is already fueled up I haven't um, uh, taken out the fuel